The opening scene features the year 2034, when CJ wakes up from his hibernation chamber. It is revealed that he is the first resident of the Wayward Pines as he woke up even before David. Upon waking up, he wanders around but finds no one awake and as a result, he returns to the hibernation chamber. Every 20 years, CJ comes out from his hibernation chamber to dust off the other hibernation chambers, listen to classical music, play chess with himself, watch television to see what is going on outside and apparently do some workouts. Several years later, CJ makes a short trip into the woods. As he is inspecting the soil, he is approached by an infected young man named Griffin. He notices that Griffin is gradually transforming into an abbey. After witnessing this, CJ tries to slip away later that night but Griffin follows him and begs CJ to take him along. Despite repeated refusals, Griffin persists and begins acting like a lunatic. As a result, CJ grabs the man's neck and chokes him to death. Again after 20 years, CJ comes out from the hibernation chamber and plays chess with himself. This time, he has a vision of his better half named Eileen in front of him. He initially believes she is there to take him away from all of this, but she tells him that he still has miles to go. He tries to persuade her to stay with him because he does not want to be alone any longer, but she encourages him to stay positive, do his job, and hope for a better future. Upon saying this, Eileen vanishes leaving CJ in tears. One more time, CJ wakes up in the year 4012, and this time, several people, including David, have woken up from their hibernation chambers. Following this, David and CJ go for a walk in the woods when they come across an abbey. However, the abbey does not attack them and instead walks away quietly. Despite this, David sees it as an example of mankind gone wrong and considers it as a threat. Nevertheless, the Wayward Pines is built and the first group of people wake up, but they start to massacre themselves after discovering they are the last people on Earth. Back in the present, Dr. Yedlin walks into the lab, determined to communicate with the female abbey. Megan is unsure how he will accomplish this, so he decides to teach the female Abby a pattern or common language or attempt to understand hers. After all, if Dr. Yedlin can teach his dog to go outside in two days, he is confident he can get to the female Abby faster. Following this, he associates images with meanings, which is the basis of all languages. Yedlin hopes that communicating and possibly negotiating will put an end to a possible Abby siege, because Abbeys are swarming around the town. He lays some flashcards in front of the female Abby and teaches her that green represents food, red represents no food, the crown represents the leader, and the hand represents friends. During this, Megan brings up Dr. Yedlin's wife, telling him not to worry as Jason will soon find him another mate. After a few hours, the female Abby does not move, so Dr. Yedlin asks Megan to feed her. As Megan provides food for the female Abby, she unexpectedly points to the male Abbeys, indicating that she wants the male Abbeys to eat it first. Seeing this, Dr. Yedlin claims that this is due to her empathy for her inferiors. He is hoping that the female Abby can help them get out of this whole mess. A short while later, Adam enters the lab and asks that Dr. Yedlin let the female Abby go because all of the other Abbeys are gathering for her. He begs to turn the female Abby to the other side of the fence right away. Adam also reveals that the female Abby is the leader, and that is why she has a sign on her palm. He goes on to say that the people of Wayward Pines are either too stupid, or too blind to do anything about it. Hearing this, Dr. Yedlin says he is attempting to rectify the situation, to which Adam responds that it is already too late. After some time, Jason and Carrie enter the lab and notice Dr. Yedlin trying to communicate with the female Abby. Jason refuses to believe that the Abbeys are bright enough to start a war and free their hostaged brethren. Dr. Yedlin claims that they must try everything possible to save the town, and for the time being, Dr. Yedlin attempts to gain the trust of the female Abbey. Following that, he displays the friendship card to the female Abbey and points it to himself, indicating that he is their friend. With this, he unlocks the cage of a male Abbey and demonstrates to everyone how the female Abbey controls the other Abbeys. However, Jason still believes that they are in the midst of a war and must eliminate their adversaries. As a result, he shoots the caged male Abbeys, infuriating the female Abbey. He is about to execute the female Abbey as well but Dr. Yedlin grabs his gun and orders him to stop. Carrie also appears to be on Dr. Yedlin's side, claiming that killing her would put the entire town at a great risk. In the next scene, Megan is working alone in the lab, when she notices a heavy loss of blood from her paralyzed leg. As she turns around, she notices a female Abby is out of her cage. It is revealed that the female Abby caught the passcode combination in a reflection, when Dr. Yedlin unlocked the cage of a male Abby earlier. Following this, the female Abby walks away, leaving Megan to bleed out. In the evening, Jason announces to the town that they must band together to fight the enemies. He says that they should not let the threat drive them into hiding. 
He also assures them that the bad times will pass and they will be able to find peace in their normal way of life. On the other hand, Carrie and Dr. Yedlin are on the lift when Dr. Yedlin informs her that he has her hospital report. He claims that, according to the report, she has trauma from the Abbey's attack and that they do not have the necessary equipment to treat it. He also says that she will not be able to carry a child to term. Following this, Dr. Yedlin goes to the lab, only to discover Megan's dead body, and the female Abby has escaped. He immediately activates the emergency alarm, alerting the security guards about the incident. Jason, Carrie and other guards arrive at the lab and inquire as to how it happened. Dr. Yedlin responds that Jason betrayed their trust, and they are now exacting their vengeance. Jason then directs the security guards to begin searching every air duct, hallway, and stairwell. Meanwhile, we see the female Abby making her way through the woods. Elsewhere, Xander approaches Rebecca and inquires if she has spoken with Dr. Yedlin. When she answers in the negative, Xander suggests she tell Dr. Yedlin about their baby. He also encourages her to stay positive and let go of the past. While they are conversing, they hear Jason's announcement about the escaping of the female Abby, telling everyone to stay inside and report anything they see. At school, Lucy is scared after hearing the news and decides to go to Rebecca, so Frank walks her there. On their way, the female Abby sees them but does not attack them, allowing them to safely reach Rebecca. It appears that the female Abby only attacks those who harm her. Following this, Xander pulls out some firearms that he had stashed away and hands them to a couple in Rebecca's salon. In the town's neighborhood, the armed guards, led by a guard's head named Mario, are stalking around in search of the female Abby, while Dr. Yedlin and Adam head to the woods to locate her. Rebecca assists them with maps of wayward pines and vantage points from which they can spectate the female Abby. After this, the armed couple sets out to find the female Abby. Rebecca also decides to go to the mountains to get a hard copy of the town map so they can find the soft points of the entrance. She departs after instructing Xander to meet her at her place in an hour. Upon reaching the headquarters, Rebecca pretends to be sent by Jason, causing the guards to let her in. Mario and the security guards come across the armed couple on the way. When they see the female Abby fleeing, the bullets begin to fly and strike the wrong people. Mario shoots the husband's neck by accident, while the husband's bullet hits Mario in the stomach. This leads to a standoff between the wife and the remaining security guards. After hearing the gunshot, Dr. Yedlin heads towards the sound of the gunshot, while Adam moves in the other direction. Upon reaching the spot, Dr. Yedlin instantly shows off his leadership skills by ordering everyone to lay down their weapons. But until this time, he learns that the husband has already died and as a result, he rushes Mario to the hospital. On the other hand, Jason takes Carrie to a room where they can live and start a new civilization if the Abbeys take over. Following this, Jason gets bad news from Carrie that she can't have children due to the Abbeys attack. Despite learning this, Jason manages to remain calm and comforts her, saying that he is proud that she told him. Meanwhile, Rebecca is on her way back from the headquarters with the hard copy in her hand, when she comes across the female Abby. The female Abby approaches her slowly, but at the same time, Xander arrives and shoots the female Abby's hand causing her to run away. Following that, both of them go to Jason's place, where Rebecca, with the help of the hard copy, informs him about the weak point, which is the drain pipe. Later, in the woods, Adam catches up with the female Abby, as she is about to climb in the drain pipe. Despite having her at gunpoint, Adam allows the female Abby to go back to her peeps. He then drops his gun and follows her inside. When he comes out on the other side, he is greeted by dozens of Abbeys who, despite hissing at him nonstop, let him pass as per their leader's order. A few moments later, Jason, Rebecca, Xander and the other guards arrive at the drain pipe and discover Adam's gun. Rebecca believes that the female Abbey has taken Adam, but Jason believes that he let the female Abbey go. Just then, they hear the roaring voices of Abbeys coming from the drain pipe, so Jason orders the guards to throw the grenades inside. On the other side of the fence, the female Abby heads back to her elders for comfort. As she lies on their lap, she is thinking the same thing as past judgment ends with her flashing back to when David opened fire from the helicopter, killing and injuring several of her fellow Abbeys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos.